from Grandstream. Uh, my name is Kevin Kraft with Baltic Networks. I'm a technical training and sales support manager. Um, also on the call with us uh, is uh, Chris Tritton from uh, Grandstream. He's the North American sales manager. Uh, and Sean Riley, he's the global partner uh, marketing manager. Good morning. Uh, just real quickly to go a little bit about uh, Baltic Networks. Um, many of you guys are our customers already, but I want to touch base uh, on a couple of points. Uh, we're founded in 2005. Uh, we're a value-added distributor uh, with many different products. Uh, we offer same-day shipping, uh, which is very, very uh, well-known in the industry. Uh, we, we ship out products if the, our orders are in by 3 o'clock uh, the same day um, when possible, and sometimes even a little bit later. Uh, we offer consulting, technical support, and training uh, in many of our different product lines and uh, you need customized solutions to grow your business. Um, we're here to help you guys. So uh, this is our first webinar series. Um, we'll have many more, many more to follow. Um, again, just to help kind of educate you guys and uh, show you what, uh, what we're doing here at Baltic and uh, the different products that we're bringing in. Uh, I'll ask, um, again, if uh, uh, we'll go through a uh, presentation with uh, Sean and Chris. Uh, if we can hold questions till the end, uh, we'll definitely answer uh, all of the questions you guys have um, once we get through the uh, presentation. Uh, and again, I want to thank you for uh, taking time to join us this morning, um, especially on this uh, tax day, I guess. So hopefully everyone's got their taxes done, or at least you can uh, get them done after this, uh, this webinar. I'm going to uh, turn over the, uh, the presentation now to uh, Sean Riley with, uh, with uh, Grandstream Network. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just give us a moment here as we switch over. There you go, Sean. Should be over to him. Uh, don't see it yet. There we go. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yeah, we're all good, Sean. Everyone's muted on there right now, so. Right, okay. Perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, again, my name is Sean Riley. I'm the Global Marketing, Partner Marketing Manager here at Grandstream, uh, and I'm here along with uh, Chris Tritton, who's our North America Sales Manager. Um, so the webinar today is about our UCM 6100 series IPPBX. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of things that uh, we kind of want to cover, but more generally kind of a broad overview of what our PBX is and what it offers to the SMB market. Um, so again, I'll just kind of go through uh, some of the background of Grandstream, and then Chris is going to go through the features themselves. Uh, so again, you can see kind of the breakdown of uh, the agenda in terms of the uh, presentation today. A little bit of history uh, about Grandstream for those of you that might be newer to us. Uh, we were founded in 2002, so we're about 12 years old. Uh, globally, we have over 400 employees. Uh, we have a very diverse product portfolio. Uh, we started out in IP telephony, uh, and we've since expanded to IP video surveillance as well. Uh, over 40 different products in total, including IP phones, analog telephone adapters, analog gateways, uh, IP surveillance cameras, encoders and decoders, and now our IP PBX. Uh, we primarily uh, serve the SMB uh, market in the business community, but we also have some overlap in the consumer markets, and now because of our PBX, and some of our newer phones we're actually picking up in the Medlar B2B market as well. So uh, I'm joining this call from uh, our headquarters in Boston. Um, we also have two other offices in the United States, uh, Los Angeles, California, and Dallas, Texas. Uh, we have a warehouse in Hong Kong, uh, and we have in-region support for every region. Um, I would say that's one of the you know, competitive advantages of Grandstream versus our, comp our competition. Uh, and that is that we do offer in-region support uh, for every region globally. So for instance, for those of you, and I'm guessing almost all of you, uh, are in North America, all of our 
North America support uh, once you would work through uh, Baltic if there are any questions that they need to elevate to us all of our North America support is held either in Boston or in Los Angeles uh, conversely for the EMEA region uh, we have in-region support in Casablanca Morocco uh, in Latin America we have in-region support in Valencia Venezuela um, and for APAC we have uh, support in Los Angeles uh, and China uh, we also have a warehouse uh, in the Netherlands uh, for the EMEA market as well so I could spend a lot of time going over a lot of the awards um, that we've won, even though we're only uh, 12 years old as a company. Um, but one of the things that we are most proud of um, is actually the most recent award we've won, which was the 2014 uh, Internet Telephony Product of the Year Award. It was uh, awarded back in January of this year, uh, and we actually won it for our UCM 6100 series IPPBX that you're going to be hearing about in a few minutes. So uh, this, was a, th this was a big win for us. Um, and again, I, uh, I, I think it would be, uh, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that, you know, this product launched in January, I'm sorry, June of last year. Uh, and since then, through the feedback, through the development that we have done, uh, we've had a lot of um, phenomenal success with this IPPBX. We've won several scores. We've been getting a lot of kind of pick up on blogs and things like that. Uh, but this award was very important to us and, and something we were very proud of. Um, for 2013, we also um, won the Innovation uh, Award from TMC Labs. They haven't awarded 2014 yet, uh, but we actually won that for our uh, IR uh, surveillance camera, the uh, GXV3672. Uh, we're not going to talk about our surveillance cameras on this call, but again, I encourage you to, uh, to go to our website and, uh, and check those out as well. Uh, and several other awards that we have won. So we have on our interoperability list, we spend a lot of time, uh, even though we're a, you know, a smaller company, uh, obviously in size in terms of you know, some of the behemoths out there like the Polycoms and the Cisco's, we spend a lot of internal resources uh, ensuring uh, compatibility and interoperability with all the major players out there, you know, Broadsoft, uh, Metaswitch, Shortel, uh, 3CX, you know, a lot of the big uh, soft switch providers out there, as well as ITSPs. Uh, and for those, those of you that have a specific uh, ITSP that you like to work with, we'd be happy to set up an interop test to uh, ensure compliance. We use all of these SIP standards, um, and again, as long as the ITSP does, we haven't run into any issues, but uh, frankly, we, we oftentimes help an ITSP uh, discover that perhaps they have an issue with uh, with their SIP stack on their on their end as well. We also have uh, partners on the door intercom side, as well as the VoIP application side in terms of soft switch uh, or uh, soft phone applications as well. On the video surveillance side, again, uh, several partners, and all of our video surveillance products are on this compliant. Uh, again, allowing that standard on the IP surveillance side. So here's kind of the breakdown within Grandstream, how we kind of segment our products. So we have our VoIP product lines, and that includes our IP multimedia phone, our Android application phone, our enterprise IP phones, which have just recently been updated with color screens, our small business and home office IP phones, our analog VoIP gateways, and then our ATAs, our analog telephone adapters. So that kind of comprises VoIP. Um, and then on the surveillance side for us, we have Fox, uh, IP, uh, mini dome and cube cameras, uh, encoders and decoders. We all have uh, also have uh, IR cameras, several different IR cameras, uh, infrared, day-night cameras uh, for both indoor and outdoor use that we've released in the past year. Again, this call isn't about the surveillance or even the, the VoIP product lines, but two things I want to mention on this slide. One, for those of you that are more familiar with the telephony side of things, our surveillance products are tailored to you. Uh, our IP surveillance products are all uh, set up as simple SIP extensions. So again, you set up uh, an office with uh, our IPPBX and our phones, and you put a video phone on, let's say, the desk of the receptionist. Now that person can get, see a video feed of someone walking towards the front door, uh, deciding whether to buzz them in uh, or not, or have a conversation with them before buzzing them in. Um, so again, there are many things you could do. Again, uh, I could spend a lot of time talking about it, but uh, suffice it to say, our call today is about the IPPBX. Um, so this has always been the way that Grandstream has broken up our product lines. And for us, launching an IPPBX 
was kind of the thing that bridged the two product lines, uh, void band surveillance, because now it's, it's the core of our system. It will pair with our IP surveillance devices on premise. It will also pair, obviously, with our VoIP uh, products uh, and specifically our phones on premise as well. So we have a long history of open source. Uh, Grandstream was founded on the, on the belief of open standards and open source. Uh, and for those of you that may not uh, have been in the industry that long, SIP was really kind of the, the uh, communication protocol that really kind of brought about the democratization of IP telephony. Before that, it was uh, standards that were pretty much locked down. You know, the big guys like Cisco and Polycom who make great products um, also lock it down. So if you bought a Cisco PBX, you could only buy Cisco phones. Um, and that was it. There was no way to get around that. And SIP kind of opened it up so that uh, you know, end users don't have to do everything within one brand. Um, you know, today, could you imagine having to buy, you know, if you have a certain cable manufacturer, it'll only work with a certain television and having to be locked into that kind of situation. And that's kind of the way it was in IP telephony you know, 15 years ago or so. So SIP was kind of the, how we got our start. All of our products, not just in telephony, but also all of our IP surveillance products are SIP-based. Um, and it's something that, that has really brought about this, this great change within the industry, which allows you uh, and, and, uh, to work with end users to, for instance, buy our PBX. But if they have uh, you know, legacy uh, IP phones, they're not ready to upgrade yet, you don't have to worry about them not being Grandstream. Conversely, if you have Grandstream phones and another PBX, as long as they're uh, uh, compliant to the SIP standard, everything will work. Uh, and that's a great benefit to, frankly, everyone in the industry. Uh, in terms of the, the uh, software that we run our phones off of, all of our enterprise uh, and SMB IP phones run on uh, the Linux operating system. Uh, and it's been phenomenal for us. Again, another great uh, open source standard that we get there. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we actually moved into Android uh, with our GXP 2200 Android application phone. We kind of thought Android would be um, you know, something that people would want, and we, we thought it would be a pretty cool product. Uh, the results have been phenomenal. Uh, the sales have been extremely high for that. Um, and we believe that you know, going forward, there is definitely a future for uh, Android within actually a desk phone in the office. Um, you know, if you think about a lot of the things that you can do with Android that weren't even available you know, to any other uh, IP desk phone, the ability to, for instance, be on this webinar and look at the webinar through your video phone uh, if it were Android or do things like salesforce.com directly from your phone. And now you've freed up your laptop screen to do even more. So having things like the GoToMeeting app uh, on Android, and I've done webinars through that, um, you know, participated uh, as an attendee, um, you know, that gives you a lot of benefits and it really opens up a lot of what uh, you know, Android can provide in the future for businesses as desk phone. And then the last uh, open source standard is obviously Asterix, and that's actually at the core of our new IPPBX. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Tritton, and he's going to go through actually the layers of our IP PBX. Good morning, Chris. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, yeah, and today we're going to talk about our, our IP PBX. It's a UCM 6100 series, released in June of last year. And since that point of time, has really become a market leader in the, in the space. Um, we've, uh, we've experienced a, a lot of success in that short period of time. And the product itself really comes in four varieties, two form factors, as you see here on the screen. It comes in the UCM 6102, 6104, 6108, and 6116. And what you'll see here as I move along is that the last two digits in each, each part number, the 02, 04, 08, and 16, uh, reflect the number of onboard FX, S, I'm sorry, FXO ports available on the system. But it does come, as you see, as a small shelf, I'm sorry, a small shelf, uh, Monable system or a rack monable system, one you rack monable system as well. The system is built on, on really four quadrants. Um, we've got the voice capabilities, the mobility capabilities, video, and then data, each of which I'll go into detail. Um, but each individual quadrant, for example, represents a solution uh, based um, approach to the system, um, it providing various solutions within one product. Um, at the same time, incorporating all of our other products, many other products that we manufacture, taking our entire product line and developing an, an onboard solution uh, for your customers. 
within the, the system itself, obviously, uh, IPPBX is not a PBX without the voice solutions. Um, so with voice built in, we, we provide a, a secure, uh, reliable uh, voice solution within the, within the PBX. Um, things such as desktop conferencing or conferencing bridge built in. Um, and all these uh, specific features and capabilities I'll spend more time on, uh, just to highlight a few here. Um, and then within mobility, the ability to take your extension uh, and bring it with you. Tell the system where you are and how you want to be reached. Integrating video, either desktop or surveillance, into the system. Um, and then things such as uh, um, voicemail to email, uh, fax to email, um, backup and restore, call recording, all these different data capabilities and features as well. Uh, so the, the point of the UCM 6100 series, again, we're providing a voice solution for your business, a very, very cost-effective uh, voice solution for your business, for your customers' businesses. Um, it's an enterprise-grade uh, PBX uh, in a very for affordable, compact solution. Uh, it's ideal for the SMB at the same time. It's going to hit many uh, small enterprise applications very, very well as also. Um, within our system, in addition to being very cost-effective up front, there are no licensing fees. Uh, so when you buy our solution, you buy the solution. We're not going to cost, it's not going to cost you additional uh, to add users to the system, uh, to activate um, uh, auto attendance or IVRs or call recording or anything else in the system. All the capabilities in the system are included. There's no additional licensing fees. And then, of course, with no licensing fees comes no recurring licensing fees as well. So there are no, in addition to a very, very small maintenance charge or extended warranty charge if you choose, uh, there are no additional fees within the system. We offer a very fast uh, and, and uh, easy conf easily configured system for setup and management. Uh, I'll get into more detail on that as well, but we, have, we offer a feature we call Zero Config, which is basically going to take the system and do much of the installation for you automatically. And um, all hardware and software is included with lifetime firmware updates. And this is important to note simply because, you know, as technology changes and evolves so quickly, uh, customers are concerned about product obsolescence. In other words, why should I buy a product today uh, when two years from now the technology is going to be completely different? Maybe I'll wait two years, see what technology comes, and make my decision at that point. Uh, what we do is by a, what we offer by allowing lifetime firmware updates is you buy the system and take advantage of what the technology is today. At the same time, as you maintain our firmware updates to the system, as we uh, as we release them, typically about two a year. Um, as technology evolves and, and, and we, we bring technology into the system, you have access to all those different technologies and different features within the phone system. Uh, so we're going to stay up on, on top of the technology for you and not, uh, and not make you responsible for that piece of the, of the, uh, the system. The UCM 6100 series will expand up to 500 extensions within a single unit. Um, and you can, of course, um, peer multiple uh, 6100 units together as well from multiple locations, or maybe you want to grow beyond 500, whatever the case may be, telecommuter, small branch, retail, whatever the case may be. Um, each unit will scale up to 500 extensions, but you can, of course, pair multiple, multiple systems together. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the 6102 comes with, with two FXO ports and 30 concurrent calls. And the concurrent calls is essentially within the voice over IP industry. That's a way to monitor resources or manage resources within the system. Uh, within the 6102, up to 30 concurrent calls, which typically means roughly 150 users or extensions on the system. Scaling that all the way up to the 6116, which is 16 FXO ports on board, as well as 60 concurrent calls, which is going to get you close to the 500 extensions um, capacity within the system. Each system comes with gigabit ports as well as PoE. And with PoE, I'm not saying that it, it is a PoE switch. It does not power the phones, but it can be powered through a PoE switch. So again, re removing clutter, additional cable, uh, power packs, power resources within the, the phone closet or your data center by allowing the system itself to be powered via a POE switch. Um, each uh, uh, UCM as well comes with an onboard conferencing bridge. Um, so up to 25 users on the 6102, 6104, and up to 32 simultaneous users on the 6108 and 6116. And as you talked to Baltic about some pricing, one that if you have a customer that's simply looking for a conference bridge, it's typically going to cost, typically going to cost them more than the UCM uh, simply for the bridge. So having the conference bridge built in, in addition to all the other capabilities and features within the system, again, makes it a very, very sellable, manageable phone system for you as, and your customers. Zero configuration provisioning, which I spoke to a second ago, is also built in, as well as uh, UI management, web UI simple management and setup. 
Uh, so making on, uh, ongoing changes and adjustments to the system very easily done through the web administration. So again, zero configuration, what this means and what this does essentially is as you plug all your grand stream devices into the network, you plug your P PBX into the network, um, the PBX is going to go out and auto-discover each of the SIP endpoints, each of the grand stream SIP endpoints. And it's going to send out a configuration or a provisioning file to each of those endpoints as well. So literally, literally within minutes of plugging everything in, you have extensions, you have a small config file sent to, the, to each device. Each device is then set up with an extension number. And each device is then operable. Uh, with literally within minutes. Now you go back in and you fine tune the configurations, you set up your trunking and you set up maybe BLFs on the phones, those types of things. Uh, but it takes a lot of the time uh, away from the configuration of the phones and the setup of the system. Um, being a standards based manufacturer, it's really important for us to be compliant with other uh, manufacturers products on the marketplace. Uh, perhaps you have a customer that was on a hosted solution, they bought a bunch of Polycom phones, uh, quality of service on the hosted solution was poor. They decided they don't want that anymore. They want an on-premise solution, but they have all these Polycom phones. Well, so being a SIP standard, uh, we're going to allow that customer then to maintain that investment in those phones at the same time put a, put a reliable on-premise solution on site for that customer, uh, make a rela uh, install a reliable voice solution for that customer. At the same time, bringing other technologies in such as uh, video surveillance, conferencing bridge, all those different technologies that we offer and solutions that we offer while maintaining that existing investment in the phones. We also work, as Sean mentioned, with a number of different uh, soft switch providers, or, or manufacturers rather, in the ITSP market. Uh, so this is important as well. So perhaps uh, I, our UCM 6100 series aside, perhaps you, have, you, you are a provider of a, uh, a hosted solution to your customers. Our, our uh, SIP endpoints are going to be a great solution for those customers as well. We've done a number of IT, uh, IoT testing with the, within these providers. Uh, broad, broad software we're certified on, MetaSwitch we're certified on, and a number, number of others. So in addition to having the, the on-premise IP PBX, we also offer the solution of having the, the endpoints as well for your hosted environment. So again, a voice solution is not a voice solution without voice, right? Uh, so within the, the uh, reliable, secure uh, voice solutions, we offer the, the basic features or the standard features that you're going to expect, things such as call routing, built-in IVR, auto-attendant, again, no additional licensing for these, which on most of our competitor systems, there's additional licensing fees to activate IVRs, um, call forwarding, call retrieval built-in, music on hold, multiple source built-in, uh, ring groups and hunt groups, call queues built-in, things such as least busy, round robin, uh, last dialed. Uh, those types of things built in uh, to the system. And again, just configurable to the point of which of how you want them to operate and how you want your system set up. Uh, conferencing again built in. We have the, the desktop conferencing um, standard within all of our endpoints, as well as the conferencing bridges, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, 6102, 6104 supports up to 25 concurrent users. And the 6208 and 6116 supports up to 32 concurrent users within the conferencing bridge. Um, and then, of course, we support all the major codecs as well uh, within the voice over IP industry, things such as uh, HD audio, uh, compression, um, G711, those types of things. So being a standards-based manufacturer, of course, we support all the standard codecs as well. Call recording built in. Uh, record any call for, for, uh, for future use or to evaluate new employees, to uh, maybe monitor a troubled employee, those types of things. Uh, your calls can be saved directly onto an internal memory of the UCM, and they can be accessed and played uh, remotely through the, through the web UI. You can also back up uh, these call recordings to an external, so external server or source as well. And again, the key to point out to the, within the uh, call recording page here is that, again, no additional licensing. So again, I'm going to mention the licensing quite a bit because that, as you price out our system versus our competitor systems, what you're going to find is up front we're going to be very, very cost effective. But it's going, to, it's going to make that even more dramatic when you factor in the ongoing costs of not only licensing, but possible recurring costs of the others that you'll be quoting, such as the Cisco and Digium and Zoltus and all these other IP PBXs on the marketplace. As you factor in not only the upfront cost, but the total cost of ownership, it's going to create even more separation between what our price is, what our cost is, versus our competition.
And of course, security is a big issue for uh, not only us, but for those that use our system. Um, voice over IP in the early days had, had some security holes uh, in which companies could be hacked potentially and, and long toll charges, large toll charges being, being uh, uh, charged up on their system. However, uh, over the years, security has become a, a primary issue or, or a focus within the voice over IP industry. And with that, we have things such as built-in firewall uh, on the 6102. And within the 6102, that's our smallest system, as I mentioned earlier. And that does have some built-in router capabilities, such as firewall, assuming that those small offices uh, typically won't have a, uh, a secure network in place. Uh, so this allows a secure network in place within the, the UCM itself. Allows a, sim a simple, cost-effective approach to not only the voice solutions and all the other capabilities that I'm going to mention and have mentioned, but also the routing and security as well. Things such as 802.1 network security, SRTP and TLS encryption, as well as HTTPS web UI and blacklist and whitelist. And what black, blacklist and whitelist means is, uh, is you can actually program into the system IP addresses that you want to block from the system. So in other words, if you know there's an IP address out there that you do not want to have all access to within the system, you can block that IP address. And also the system will then recognize as multiple failed attempts to log in through a specific IP address, it will take that IP address and automatically block that as well. Uh, so blacklist and whitelist is a big, uh, a big point for security as well. So video is really, within the, the, uh, the communications industry, uh, video is one of the really fast growing components or segments within this industry. Um, everybody has some strong interest in video. Not a lot have really implemented a lot of video today simply because of cost. Um, but within the, our video component, uh, you can have your multiple person video conferencing calls within our desktop devices. And you'll see some images on the screen there. Uh, we have a 4.3 4 inch uh, video display as well as a 7 inch video display. And as Sean touched upon earlier, both of those devices are now going to be Android as well. Uh, so you can imagine that 7-inch display video monitor or video phone there that you're looking at, um, using that device itself to not only have within this GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, uh, the audio communications, but, but then also viewing this webinar from that phone as well. And as Sean mentioned, things such as Salesforce.com, um, um, Android, uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm drawing blanks here, hey, uh, Google Hangouts, et cetera, all the contacts you have within your Google account that automatically sent to your phone as well. So many, many advantages of the Android within your desktop device itself. I have one customer, one, uh, one partner, who developed a specific application for Android, which they loaded onto our Android desktop devices, which was designed for the uh, um, attorney uh, vertical. And basically what it does is, as a call comes in and, and one of the representatives answers the phone, the app will pop up and have the representative then choose whether it's a billable account, if it's on retainer, if it's billed per second, per 30 seconds, whatever the options are. Uh, click choose the specific option per the caller coming in. And then at the end of the call, the app will actually pull all the data together, all the call data together, send it up to their billing software format, and automatically bill that customer. So various uh, uh, apps like that, options like that that the Android really opens up to make your businesses not only more efficient, but more cost effective as well. So again, video calling within our desktop device is a little larger picture of the previous screen. Um, so you can have your, your conference, video conferencing within the desktop devices itself, in addition to the video surveillance. So what, what our UCM does, and which is really cool, is within all, all of our video surveillance products, and we have a full line of day, night, um, HD, FHD, many different options within video surveillance. At the same time, you can set up, for example, motion detection uh, within, the, within the surveillance cameras. If somebody walks in front of the camera or breaks the motion detection, the, the camera can automatically send the video to a predetermined destination, such as perhaps a receptionist's video phone, uh, the owner of the company's desktop phone in his office, whatever the case may be. And then that person then sees the video and can talk through two-way audio back and forth to whoever may be at the door or in the parking lot, in the warehouse, wherever the case may be. Perhaps you're on vacation on the beach in Florida, and you're monitoring your, uh, your office, and you see somebody in the warehouse that's not supposed to be there. You can, again, then talk through your your Android uh, or iOS application through the surveillance camera at the office. And within the surveillance uh, component, each surveillance camera can simply be set up as an extension on the system. It's a SIP extension on the system. So again, from any video phone, you can dial that extension and see that camera, view that camera, talk through two-way audio through that camera. 
and many other capabilities and features as well, things such as smoke detection, uh, as I mentioned, motion detection, many, many features built into these cameras which make it very, very useful within the office space. But again, the key is you register each of the cameras to the PBX as a SIP extension. And to take that a step further, for those of you that also do sell hosted solutions, you get, you get paid you know, $30 per month billable for each seat. Now you can also sell surveillance cameras to that same customer, again, increasing the billable to that customer, incre increasing the revenue to your company. And just as in the voice side, within the video side, we do support all the major codecs as well, H.263, 263P, 264, et cetera. Uh, and then within the data component, the, the data is considered a generic term, but what that includes is things such as fax to email, voicemail to email, call detail records, um, backup and restore, all of these various uh, technologies that incorporate the network into the system as well. Um, things such as uh, uh, phone usage records, the, having the ability to monitor um, a call group, a sales queue, an accounting queue, customer service queue, whatever the case may be, monitor specific employees, new employees, uh, things through uh, call detail records as well as recording the ability to uh, monitor the performance of a new employee, perhaps on a probationary period, whatever the case may be, but allowing, allowing you to have more control over how your system is being used and how your employees are using your system and monitor those, those employees as well. Um, for example, within the hospitality industry, uh, uh, the medical, uh, uh, the attorney, attorney offices, medical billing, those types of industries in which you need to create logs and, and understand the call detailed records for billable solutions as well, uh, bringing all that together within, within one database. And within the, the CDR records, they're all broken down by line data and time, et cetera. Uh, but to take it a step further as well, perhaps you're having some issues within your SIP trunking on the system. Uh, you want to troubleshoot it. If you actually hover your mouse over a specific uh, call that was reporting an issue, you can actually track the, the entire path of that call. So it, got, it rang in on a specific trunk to the receptionist. The receptionist transferred it to uh, my extension, 817. I transferred it to Sean, so on and so forth. You can actually see the entire flow, which trunks are being used and how, how it's being routed throughout the company so you can track it and perhaps further isolate any issues within the call quality within the system as well. Um, integration of phone records, uh, phone book files, and, ser uh, and servers within the system. We do support LDAP files. Uh, what's important to note is the LDAP files are synced within the PBX, not the phones themselves. And this is important simply for um, efficiency. So if you're adding or deleting records from your files, uh, it doesn't have to go to each phone and update. It updates the PBX, the phone then access that through the PBX itself. So again, just an, an efficient uh, way to monitor and, and uh, and stay on top of the updated LDAP files. Email forwarding and fax forwarding to the email. No, I'm sorry, voicemail and fax forwarding to your email. Again, very, very popular feature. I don't know, I honestly cannot tell you the last time I dialed into a, a voicemail, a PBX voicemail. I receive all my voicemails, all my faxes directly on my smartphone. And I listen to them either on my smartphone, my desktop, or my tablet as I'm out in or out of the office. And again, just a very, very convenient, easy way uh, to access files, to save files, to forward files um, uh, within your company to either internal or external destinations. System backup and restore, you know, God forbid something happens to the system, lightning strike, whatever the case may be, and you need to, need to restore and get back up and running immediately or very quickly for your business. Uh, the ability to back up your current configuration files as well as things such as voicemails, and other, other files within the system to an external server. Install a new system and automatically do a restore. Get your system back up and running as soon as possible. We can back up to an external SD card or internal flash drive as well, as well as a, a network server. So again, many different options, many different functionalities, capabilities within the system make it very, very easy to not only uh, install a system, but to make sure the system is maintained and up and running as well. The mobility piece for me is, is the most exciting piece. It's mobility within the voice over IP industry is, is, uh, is a way for you to tell the system where you are. Uh, your extension within your PBX is your extension. And uh, it, the days have passed now where the extension is a phone on your desk. It's now your extension. You just tell the system where you are, how you want to be reached, and that's how we reach you. Um, we live in a mobile world. Uh, many of us are in and out of the office, traveling on business, uh, away on vacations. 
and it's not 30 years ago if you're on vacation, you typically have your phone with you and you're doing emails, you're answering calls on your vacation. And this is, you know, as sad as that sounds, this is a way to maintain that. Um, uh, we don't need to uh, need to wait to the end of the day to go back and listen to voicemails. Perhaps there's at some point throughout the day somebody's trying to reach you for a critical answer. And you can then answer and respond to people in real time just basically by having all your communications with you at all points in time so you can stay on top of things, get information, critical information to different employees, customers throughout the day as needed. Uh, so it's not waiting to the end of the day, end of the day to go through your 35, 40 emails and voicemails and respond one by one. You're able to stay on top of these and make yourself and your company much more efficient as the day progresses. Uh, it utilizes, as I mentioned, extension for the user rather than your desktop um, phone at your office. Uh, we do support both video and audio calls through mobility as well. Um, so you, um, either video or audio calls, conference call, uh, whatever the case may be. Again, you're out of the office, you're in a hotel, wherever you may be, you can still maintain those calls, those scheduled calls throughout the day. Also allows you to monitor your business from anywhere. So I gave the example earlier of uh, perhaps the owner of a company laying on the beach in, in Florida and at the same time uh, dialing the SIP extension of a camera in the warehouse and viewing the camera in the warehouse or viewing the camera that supports the front desk, whatever the case may be. Um, just allows you to stay on top of your office and your structure uh, from anywhere at any time. And, uh, and again, through the two-way audio feature allows you to then speak through, uh, through the IP cameras at those locations. Again, a very, very strong feature that we've, we've built and incorporated into the system. Uh, and it does separate us, distinguish us from the competition as well. It's, it's creating an entire solution uh, around our product line, which really does benefit your customers and offers your customers a lot of different capabilities and flexibility uh, within the capabilities of our system. Uh, gives you the ability to access everything from anywhere. Uh, the ability to access all your call recordings remotely. Uh, again, I mentioned your voicemail email, your faxed email, all your mission critical data. Uh, you can access at, in real time from anywhere in the world. And being voice over IP, uh, the ability to have multiple locations, um, the ability to have multiple locations, multiple telecommuters, all within the same company, all under the same corporate umbrella, regardless of location. Uh, this is a quick example of the way we are configured within the United States of North America. We have our corporate office in Boston, we have an office in Dallas, we have an office in LA. Each of these are networked through multiple UCMs. I'm actually talking to you from my home office in Minneapolis. The snow's all melted now, by the way. And uh, as far as anybody from the outside can tell, Sean and I are sitting next to each other in a conference room in Boston, and we're all in the same system. Uh, but having the ability to have multiple locations um, all under the same umbrella is a, is is a huge advantage, not only for extension to extension dialing, but least cost routing. If you're dialing from Boston to LA, a local number in LA, you can access a trunk in LA, dial locally for uh, least cost routing, toll bypass, those types of capabilities. And at the same time, the ability to have um, a small branch office with the PBX, because uh, typically in the voice over IP industry, a small branch office, it's not really cost effective to put another PBX at that location. It's typically more cost effective just to put phones out there. And that's definitely one of the advantages of voice over IP, is you can put remote phones out there, stand alone, and then access those centralized PBX, regardless of location. But by being a very cost-effective solution, we give you the ability to not only have phones at those small branches, but also a, a, a UCM. So what that UCM then is going to do is it's going to give redundancy. If the internet goes down or the trunking goes down between locations, you still have access at that location. In addition to the E911, it's a very, very simplified E911 solution there as well. If anybody at that location has to dial 911, it has a local trunk coming into the UCM. So it dials out that local trunk, gives proper E911 addressing to the operators as well. So many, many uh, residual benefits to having a full-featured, uh, fully functional, cost-effective PBX solution at that location also. Recent feature updates. Um, Sean, if you don't mind, I'm going to toss it back to you. And you can uh, you can cover the the, uh, the recent feature updates. And as I, as I mentioned, we offer or we, we come out with roughly two so far. We're targeting two uh, firmware updates on the system per year. And this is an example of some of the things that we've recently added. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, one more thing, just before I get to the feature updates that uh, that I just want to touch on, just going back a slide here with the deployment scenario. Another great thing, uh, again, for the end users out there. As the economy picks up, let's say I'm a small business and I only have 10 salespeople, so I really only probably need our UCM 6102 because 30 concurrent calls is, is all that I need right now. 
but obviously as my business hopefully expands in the next year or two, I can actually take, even if I only have one office, I can take the 6102 I have currently, add a second 6102, and now I'm getting collectively uh, 60 concurrent calls uh, and can split that up to try to, to, try to uh, maximize the benefit of that 30 and 30. So again, you really can uh, daisy chain the PBXs together as well. Uh, which is great for smaller businesses that are just getting started um, that, again, hope to grow in the next few years. You don't have to worry about completely replacing the PBX. So these are some of the feature updates that, uh, that I wanted to just kind of quickly go over at the end um, for a couple reasons. First of all, we uh, take a lot of reseller feedback and really use that to integrate uh, future feature updates that we add to our PBX. Uh, to my knowledge, we're the only PBX manufacturer that within our forum site actually has a wish list feature uh, where resellers tell us, you know, here's, here's a feature that I would like. You know, it's an odd one. We had uh, one feature request that said, you know, uh, on, the, on the admin panel, I'd really like to be able to see two time zones because it would help me uh, because our offices are East Coast, West Coast. You know, not something that's very common, but technically not that difficult. So it was very easy to kind of tailor that solution as well. Um, and again, as, as Chris mentioned, we, uh, we strive to add feature update uh, a few times a year so that, again, customers can gain more and more. And of course, all of these updates are included. There's no additional cost. There's no licensing fee, uh, anything like that. So the first um, is, again, the ability uh, to do interactive GUI for choice of extension. And again, we'll, I'll uh, kind of go through what that means. So this means through our zero config functionality, as Chris mentioned before, you can, with Grandstream phones and a Grandstream PBX, plug in the Grandstream phones, the PBX will automatically detect them, and then it can assign extensions. So not only you know, does this take a what would be perhaps a two or three hour setup time for that uh, deployment for you as a reseller down to say 20 minutes because now it's provisioning every phone, you know the extensions and now you just put uh, each extension in each office. Um, but now we can actually go one step above that and if you enable this feature, um, apologies for the poor resolution of this screenshot, this is actually just taken from our brand new uh, 2140 and 60 uh, color LCD phones. But now, if you enable the feature on the PBX, you can actually create extensions directly from the phone itself. Uh, again, to my knowledge, we're the only manufacturer that offers this, but think about it from an integrator, from a reseller standpoint. This means you have set up an office of you know, 15, 20, 25 people. You're called uh, a month or two later to say, hey, you know, we've hired someone. Now you can uh, either do one of two things. You could remotely log into the PBX and have them set it up, or if they're not even technical or you have you know, some kind of service arrangement with them, you go into the office, you plug in the phone, the phone can now detect the PBX. If you look at the first image up top, you'll see where it says UCM detect, and this is from the phone menu. Uh, and then on the second uh, image as well, you'll see the IP address of the PBX, and you can actually pick which one, uh, if you have multiple PBX, same local network. From there, you can actually select an extension and then set up the extension directly from the phone. So we're talking about a four-step process, all phone-based, in which you can set up extensions without even having to log into the PBX. Now again, this feature has to be enabled. Um, this isn't something that defaults to this, but again, for offices that are rapidly expanding or if you prefer to walk around after you've set up the PBX rather than use zero config, you can actually do it by extension on each phone uh, and get the benefit of that as well. So this was a big update for us. Um, some other features that we've added that, again, um, I, I mention only because they're not typically included in SMB IP PBXs. You know, Chris mentioned before uh, video or uh, codec transcoding. That's a big one. Um, I, I dare you to find a uh, an IP PBX uh, designed for any market uh, that has the ability to transcode uh, the different audio codecs and pair from an ITSP through the PBX to an end user if they're using different audio codecs. Uh, again, for under you know eight hundred dollars for even the base unit. Um, but these are some of the other features that again enterprise PBX is offered that we wanted to make sure were offered in our PBX for SMBs because they're becoming growing feature. Uh, the first is direct inward dialing. So this would be the ability in North America, your 10-digit number, let's say your cell phone number. Uh, typically when you have a 10-digit number on your business card, 
users believe, you know, the, the person you give that to believes one of two things. It's either a cell number or you're, you know, you have the ability to directly dial into that. Now, big enterprise corporations, you know, financial analysts, lawyers, things like that have had this ability for a while without having to give a business card that says, you know, dial me at 555-1000, extension 523. Now you have your own DID number, and even though it's going through the PBX, it's ringing directly, uh, directly to that end user. So again, this is a feature that completely bypasses the IVR uh, when you have that DID number. Uh, and again, a lot of customers have found this extremely beneficial. Conversely, obviously, we also added the, the reverse of that, the inverse of that, the DOD, direct outward dialing. Again, it would give the ability for an end user at their desk within an extension of an office when they dial out, rather than having the caller ID number come up with the main office number, it will come up directly for that direct dial number for the user. So again, if someone misses a call and dials back, it's not going to show the main office. Maybe they won't know who called. It'll actually dial directly back to the desk of the user that called them. So again, um, many other you know, features and add-ons. I just wanted to kind of highlight a few. But uh, when we created and, and spent a long time designing and developing our PBX, um, you know, it really was, what are the enterprise features that are not available to SMBs that we can offer? Um, more importantly, we needed to make sure that there weren't licensing fees uh, at all. Because there really are, it's kind of a one-two punch uh, with larger IP PBXs. Um, it's not just a uh, an update fee, but it's also to maintain the license. You know, a lot of times, as many of you know, if you buy some of these, uh, some of our competitors' PBXs, you're buying the PBX, and then you're buying a one, two, or three-year license that you have to renew if you want the PBX to work. And then sometimes, if they do a version update of the PBX and add new features, they ask you to pay for that as well. So there are really occasionally up to three different res revenue streams. Uh, that that PBX manufacturer is getting. And with ours, you're only buying our PBX. That's it. There's no licensing fee. There's no feature update fee. Uh, everything's included uh, when you buy our product. Um, the last thing I just want to mention briefly, uh, for those of you that are, are hopefully interested in, in GrandStream, um, I'm going to let uh, Chris speak after me to talk about a, an exciting training we're actually doing with Baltic networks uh, next month uh, that you can join us with. But one of the things we have at GrandStream um, that uh, will allow you as an integrator or reseller um, to be able to get some marketing materials from us, be able to do product webinars as well. Uh, we also have uh, high-res product image and graphics, uh, site updates and announcements. Again, just something added um, that, again, uh, our partners, you know, that having this call and, and being able to do this with Baltic is phenomenal. Um, but again, sometimes you just need a high-res image. You're going to a show or you're going to a customer, and now you can just log into our site and be able to get that. Uh, there's no minimum spend requirement to be a reseller in our Reseller Connect program. Uh, and when you sign up, you will have to put Baltic Networks uh, as your distributor so that we uh, know who you are and are able to approve you. But we do have this program. It's, ex it's extremely popular, and I highly recommend it for those of you that uh, are interested in, in kind of learning more and, and becoming a GrandStream reseller. Uh, we also have uh, demo kits, and again, Chris will mention this uh, again in a second because this will uh, actually integrate with the training that's coming up next month. Uh, but we do have a reseller demo kit that includes uh, both the PBX, our Android phone, uh, a uh, wireless IP camera, uh, and an SMB uh, PoE camera, or I'm sorry, PoE phone, uh, a four-port PoE switch, and the cables and everything kind of bundled into a. Uh, reseller demo kit available uh, through Baltic Networks as well. So again, uh, thank you for the kind of the product summary. And again, I'll turn it back to Chris, uh, who can uh, describe the uh, training that we're actually going to be offering uh, next month with Baltic. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And uh, before we get as, as well, uh, you know, this slide aggressively priced for the SMB market. I do encourage you to contact your sales rep over Baltic. And just get some sample pricing because you will be amazed at how, a com how competitive this is. And then just one last comment regarding the licensing as well. I know we beat this to death, um, but just you know, for simple concept, um, understanding if you sell a phone system to a customer, they add a user. They simply add a user to the system. They not, not only on a competitor system, they not, not only purchase the phone, they have to purchase a user license as well. And that's typically anywhere from fifty to three hundred dollars just for the license. So you're adding the cost of the phone as well as the cost of the license to that. 
a simple addition of an employee at that location. With us, just adding the phone is all you do. And it just further exemplifies how, how, the, how cost effective our solution is going to be for your customers. So I just encourage you to get some pricing, price it out, maybe find a couple of customers that you, you're uh, thinking about quoting a system to and, uh, and getting in front of them. It's not only a great cost effective solution, it's also a great um, mandate for your customers as well. Maybe they're sitting on an old Nortel or Avaya PBX that's dying, maintenance costs are killing them. It's a great way to get a solution in their office immediately uh, without budget in many cases and, and allow a solution for them. So again, thank you everybody for, for visiting and yeah, so we have a, we have a training coming up and the training is scheduled for Mark 21st, in the, I'm sorry, for uh, May 21st in the Chicagoland area. And it's going to be a, a, a UCM certifi certification class, certification course for our product. And you can, you'll be able to come in there, purchase the demo system, either beforehand or on site, and then uh, um, uh, become certified, understand how to install, how to configure, how to troubleshoot the product, and, uh, and be able to start uh, uh, implementing this for your customers. Yeah, so a great uh, day-long training class uh, scheduled over at uh, in the Chicagoland area through Baltic, and as you can see on the screen there, there's an example of their, their web page, Baltic Network's uh, web page with our, our training icon on there as well. Um, so I encourage you, if you have interest in our product, this is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and get certified and, uh, and hit the ground running with our, our UCM. Thank you very much, right. and uh, if you have questions, I think... Yeah, Kevin, go right ahead, please. Go ahead, sorry. Thank you, Chris and Sean. I just wanted to show everybody on the screen here. Uh, obviously, this is a uh, page on our website. Um, if you go to our homepage under resources and then go to uh, training, um, we'll, we'll uh, present you with all of our training classes that are available. Uh, the newest one is the Grandstream training. And uh, again, we're taking, uh, taking sign-ups for that now. Uh, so if you go to that uh, URL and uh, uh, click on the button, you'll see the, the price of the training is $695. Uh, it's for, again, for a one-day training. It does include the trainer kit as well. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to having some of you guys sign up for that. Um, we'll, we'll actually now... Um, uh, we went over the training. Uh, I just want to mention to everyone at the end of the uh, webinar, if there's actually a quick survey, we, we'd appreciate it if you fill out the survey uh, when you exit. Um, but we're also right now going to host any uh, questions that you have. Uh, we have a list of them already in the queue, so we'll go through those. And then if there's any additional ones, uh, please either add them to the uh, questions list, and uh, we'll, we'll try to post, you know, try to uh, front all the questions that you have. Okay, Chris. I don't know. I'm checking to see if you know if you have the if you have the questions there. I can also read them off to you too if you don't. I do not. No, I can't see them. Okay, I got you. No problem. Okay, one of the first ones we have is uh, uh, from Alejandro. Uh, how is the performance of the Grandstream in uh, two offices connected with VPN uh, IPsec, uh, IP PBX working at the main office, and IP phones working at a remote office uh, through this IPsec uh, tunnel? How, is the question, how is the performance? Yeah, well, through an IPsec tunnel is what the, the question is, if, if it's capable. It is, yeah. So an, if, an IPsec tunnel is, obviously, we work through it. We, we, can, we can accommodate it. It's not required. Uh, but for additional security, it, it's, uh, it's certainly understandable. And we, the, the quality of service, the quality of it will simply be dependent upon the quality of that, of that tunnel. As long as the tunnel is providing enough bandwidth, enough um, uh, enough capability to get the transmission through, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, the, the quality of communications in an optimized network is going to be perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one's also from Alejandro. Um, uh, Grandstream is compatible with uh, Avaya um, uh, systems. Um, we are. In fact, we've done some interop testing with Avaya. Um, in fact, they're going to be, uh, they, they're becoming a partner of us. Of ours will have some announcements coming in the future on that as well. Um, so yeah, they're, they're SIP product we are compatible with. Okay, can you, um, there's another question on uh, the Ailing phones. Uh, do you know, what, is there a list of Ailing phones that are compatible with, um, with the Grandstream PBXs? Yalink is, is SIP. Uh, we are compatible with all SIP devices, so there's not a specific list. Um, if it's a Yalink device, you can re reutilize it on our UCM. Um, if you're interested in uh, potentially Replacing Yalink, the Yalink with Grandstream devices, we do have a compatibility chart that compares each of our devices specifically to the Yalink product that it compares to, compares most directly to, and uh, and we can provide that for you as well. Okay, great. 
Uh, next one is from Eric. Uh, does the appliance require reverse proxy? So some kind of NAP kind of questions. <laughs> Um, Unfortunately, I'm going to have to table that question, and I'll have to get back to you. Uh, if you could maintain or... or uh, yeah, I can uh, make a list here. Sure, sure. So, Eric, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll table that one and actually get, uh, get you an answer for, for that question. Uh, Alejandro, uh, let's see here. Uh, IPPBX IVR. Um, a question on it, if, if it supports IPPBX uh, IVR. Yes. I think... Yeah, I yeah, IVR. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that question is asking. Um, there is an IVR built into our IPPBX. Um, okay. I'm not exactly sure what what the question is asking. Okay, and I can I can uh, t uh, I can actually uh, contact Alejandro with that uh, for more details. Um, the next question is from Nate. Uh, are there any options for email to fax uh, sending? In specific, um, no. You can. We're going to do it. We're going to do a forward of the email or the fax to email. Um, there's as of right now. Sean, are you still on the line? I am. Yeah. Sean, do you, can you answer whether or not in our uh, in our future, if we have if we have uh, fax to, uh, email to fax sending capabilities through the PBX? So I know that's been uh, discussed. I think that's on the drawing board potentially down the road. Um, the issue with that um, is frankly more the way that um, other manufacturers do faxing. Um, obviously we receive it on the inside because that's, that's very easy for our PBX to recognize. T38 going out can be an issue um, and most users we've found too that are still sending faxes, you know, an accounting department or an HR department for instance, typically has that analog fax machine already. So having the analog port in our PBX kind of alleviates the need for that. But I know that they are looking at that. I, I think it will be um, a while at least before uh, we would have that done. Thank you, Sean. And as Sean mentioned, T38 is the, is the protocol for fax on voice over IP. And T38, unfortunately, is not a, a real standardized protocol. Um, there's many different manufacturers that, that Take some liberties with the T38, and, and they're not all they're not all as in sync as as SIP would be, for example. So, with all the different variations of T38, it becomes very difficult to to use T38 as a standard protocol for faxing and an effective protocol for faxing through through IPPBXs. So that's just kind okay. of that, that that inherently indicates uh, additional issues uh, with faxing. Okay. Uh, question, uh, another question from Eric, uh, and this is, uh, again, a technical question. Uh, does the appliance have high availability and, and or uh, load balancing features? Um, high yes, high availability. There's a number of different solutions for high availability, depending upon what the question is asking. Um, as far as uh, mirrored redundancy, hard drives, those types of things, um, currently no. Um, Load balancing, you know, let's just let's uh, if you don't mind, let's table that load balancing portion and get back to you. Uh, but there are a number of sure. different high availability solutions in the UCM. Um, what we're we're not able to accommodate today are things such as um, redundant power supplies, uh, mirrored hard drives, those types of things. Okay, okay. Uh, any question from Todd? Uh, is there a list of SIP trunk providers that can be uh, used, uh, like Vitality? And I'm thinking that's probably on your your site for for list list of that, but um you may know of others yep. yeah, off, off the top of your head that are available. Yeah, we have a full list on our website, and there's there's a, a large number of them. Um, if you go to our website, grandstream.com, under the Partners link, and ITSP Partners, you'll see a number of different uh, um, SIP providers. Okay, great. And I've got a question that came up on uh, a demo kits, and then also, uh, do you need to be certified for the class? Uh, and again, the, the, right now, the, uh, the demo kits are available as, as part of this training. Uh, and and the, at the end of this training, if you take that, uh, you, will, you will get a certification. So you don't need to be certified to, uh, to go to the class. Yeah, that's the point of, that's the purpose of the class is to certify you. Right. Okay. Um, uh, Ricardo, uh, how many extensions can be handled at the same time? And that's probably a question, uh, I guess, on the model of the, uh, the, the PBX. Correct. Yeah, it's good. Up to 500 on the UCM 6116, up to 150 on the 6102, um, and then uh, scaling in between on the, on the various models, 6104, 6108. 
Uh, so anywhere from 150 to 500, depending upon your requirements. And as Sean mentioned as wait well, a minute, wait a minute. if you wait, go ahead, Chris. I, I think we may be confusing number of concurrent calls with the with the overall number of user calls. Um, what, what was the question again? Uh, how, how many extensions can uh, can can the system handle at the same time? Uh, so it's not, simultaneous calls. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Uh, yeah, so that, no that can be, be interpreted two ways, obviously. Handle at the same time is referring to concurrent calls, number of extensions, um, or how many extensions can be registered onto the system. Uh, the total number of concurrent calls are up to 30 on the 6102 and 50 up to the 6116. If that answers the question, otherwise the number of extensions is 150 to 500, depending upon the UCM version that you're purchasing. Okay. Uh, okay. But then, as Sean, Sean mentioned earlier, um, it's very easy to peer multiple systems together. So if you purchase the 6102 and you need to grow beyond the concurrent calls or number of extensions that are on that system, you can peer multiple UCMs together and grow that grow that system that way as as well. Great, great. Okay. Question from Nate: uh, Can multiple IVRs be set up, uh, uh, say, on a shared office space uh, where there is one uh, receptionist but multiple companies? So doing like a multi-company system uh, in a, uh, a PBX. Yeah, so you're, you're asking about multi-tenancy, and, and the answer is yes. Um, you can set up multiple IVRs. You can make each business seem like they have their own PBX. Um, what you cannot do, just uh, just to note, is you cannot set up that, uh, that uh, invisible demarcation point or barrier between the companies. So there... Uh, somebody, if, if there are multiple companies using the same PBX, anybody from a various company can either purposefully or indirectly call an extension uh, from, a from one of the different organizations on the PBX. Directly, okay. Great, great. Okay, from uh, Joshua, uh, how, how many administrators can be assigned uh, in the UCM series? So, so how many administrators can be assigned to a, uh, to a particular unit? Uh, Sean, do you know the exact number of that? We're actually adding, so what we're doing is we're adding a two-tier system. Um, so that we'll have both an admin that has kind of super user rights and then uh, a technical uh, viewer or, or lesser admin who will have the ability to see kind of real-time reporting and CPU usage and things like that. Um, but it currently, uh, only one admin can be uh, logged in concurrently. Okay, uh, next one from Chris. Uh, is there a way to access the voicemail uh, for a specific extension uh, from outside the unit, so from outside the office? Um, yes. Uh, um, I'm confused as to whether the customers or the, the question is asking, can you dial an extension or a uh, voicemail for a voicemail sure. box other than your own? Um, if you're dialing your own voicemail box, you can access it from anywhere. Um, you can. All the voicemails are tied directly to an extension. So in order, in order to access a voicemail box of somebody other than your own, you would need access to that extension. Okay, so if you had access to it, you could get to it. Okay. Okay, uh, as an extension, uh, the shared, shared office question, uh, can you do it with multiple daylight, uh, day-night ring uh, settings? So if you have a multiple, multiple uh, uh, office kind of environment sharing the PBX, um, again, is it kind of capable of doing uh, night, day, ring settings, um, you know, for the different companies on that PBX? Yeah, you would set up a call group for each, each specific company, and then you would have the capability of doing a specific day and night for that specific call group. Great, great. Okay. And then uh, uh, from Yavor, uh, can you please expand on the uh, video conferencing capabilities? Uh, for example, uh, can you show a, a desktop uh, PowerPoint presentation, for example, uh, to a participant in the conference uh, utilizing, uh, I guess, the, the, the phones themselves? And I'm sorry, could you please repeat? I broke up on you. Yeah, that's okay. Moment. Yeah, they're asking if you, uh, if you can expand a little bit on the video conference capabilities of the phones. Um, in an example, they're asking if you could share like a, a desktop or a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation uh, to partic participants on a, a conference call. Utilizing the screen on the phone. Uh, is, yeah. um, so, Chris, I can handle this one. Um, 
So I, I think this may have been uh, confusing what Chris was saying about uh, kind of the video features through the PBX and my mentioning of through our Android uh, video device being able to watch a webinar. Um, so through our video conferencing, uh, it would be endpoint to endpoint. So for instance, if I have a video phone in the LA office and I you know, want to watch the person as I speak with them here from the Boston office, I can do that endpoint to endpoint. And the PBX is really just acting basically as a switch, kind of pushing the data endpoint to endpoint. But the other thing I mentioned was the ability to watch webinars, things like that. And that's actually using the Android app and our GXP 2200 Android application phone. Um, and again, that's something you can do uh, through the abilities of Android on our video phone. So hope that answers. Okay. We've got one more here. Um, on the security levels of the UCM, um, as far as administrator privileges and um, extensions and things like that, can you set uh, privilege levels so that certain users can only look at extensions, other users can only look at CDR uh, records, and maybe other users have read-write functionality to manage the system? Yeah, so as of today, there the there is just the one administration level of credentials. And there's not a user interface uh, built into the system today. Uh, it's something that we are um, looking at including in the future to the system. So in other words, uh, the user itself, the desktop user, wouldn't have access to the, the CDR records or the uh, configuration utility of the system. It would only be the administrator of the system today. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, for now, that's uh, the questions we have in, in the list. Um, again, we want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time out of their day to, uh, to join our webinar. Uh, certainly, any more questions, uh, any more um, questions on pricing, uh, technical questions, any, anything you have for these products, uh, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to us here at uh, Baltic Networks. Um, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to hopefully seeing some of you in the training class and uh, in some of our future webinars. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.